Hello YouTube, it's Movie Day Gamer, and today I'm going to show you guys how to edit and upload your video. Now some of you might be asking yourselves, why would I ever need to edit my video? It already looks good as it is. Editing makes the message and point of your video more clear and much easier for your viewer to watch. In this tutorial today, I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro CS5 because it is the editing software that I use and I need a lot more tools in my editing software, but the features I'm going to be showing you are basically fundamental across all sorts of different editing softwares. There are also many free ones like Windows Movie Maker and Apple iMovie. And once we get done editing the video, I'm also going to show you how to upload it, which is pretty simple, but I'm also going to offer a few key tips from what I've learned for titling your video and adding a description and whatnot. So, let's get started. Alright guys, we're on the computer here, and we are going to get started editing our Let's Play that we recorded from last time. The reason I'm editing a Let's Play is because it is simpler to do and it is easier to demonstrate these techniques on a simpler video. So first we're going to open up our editing software, which in this case is Adobe Premiere Pro CS5.5. Here we're going to start a new project, we're going to call it Sonic LP1. And we're just going to go ahead and save it to that spot. Don't worry about any of this, because that's not important, but we need to worry about this area here. We need to choose the correct format. Since I recorded mine with a capture card that only went up to 480p, I'm going to select standard 48 kilohertz, And that's going to be it. I don't typically change sequence names, so we're going to just hit OK. And that is going to build our project for us right here. And here we've got our software opened up. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put our footage into our uh, little media box here. And we're going to do that by going to File import and we're going to go to the desktop where I have placed all my video game footage files and my audio files Sonic LP tutorial and we're going to grab these two here to start off with we're going to open those up and it's going to import them just like this now you've got to give it a moment whenever they're first imported in Adobe for it to conform to the audio of the actual clip now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our footage here, this is our video game footage here, and we're going to click and drag it down to our timeline just like this. We're going to place it in our timeline, shows up quite nicely there. And we're also going to grab our audio and we're going to put that below it a couple tracks down, maybe about here. That's good. We're going to open this up, expand it, and then go down a little bit so we can see all the audio waveform. After reviewing your audio commentary for a little bit, you need to find a point that matches up with the video game footage that you recorded, so that way you can actually bring these two clips together and make it so that they're running at the same time. For me, I heard a high-pitched sound whenever I hit the 2 button on the Wii Remote to uh, confirm my control scheme. I'm going to go and find that in my audio clip down here. Once you've found your sync point, you need to go ahead and play through it one time. Alright, I'm going to use that high-pitched noise that you guys heard, if you, if you heard it at all. It's just this little high-pitched noise just before the intro begins. Alright, and we're going to back up a little bit more, and we're going to step forward with this button here. We're going to use the step forward button until we get to the start of the sound. Alright, and that's the start. Now what we're going to do is we're going to need to crop the audio where the sound starts. We're gonna zoom in with this little button over here. Zoom out, zoom in. And we're gonna come over here to our tools, right in this corner here, and we're gonna select the razor tool. In Adobe Premiere Pro, you can also select this tool by simply clicking the C button one time. And we're gonna bring it over here and we're gonna line it up with our leader head, this red line going across here, and we're going to cut it just by clicking. And to go back to your selection tool, come over here and select the selection tool, or hit the V key on your keyboard. And we're going to zoom out again, and as you can see, the clip has been split into two different sections. We're going to go through and we're going to find where that corresponds to our video. Oh, here it is. Alright, alright, and that's the beginning of that sound. 
But now that we've got our two cut points, just by cutting it just like that, as we did for the audio commentary, we are going to slightly adjust these by moving them, and we're going to take these two cut points and we're going to drag the clips so that they line up right on the cut points. This makes things a lot easier, and this, to me, is the most effective way of syncing something up if it's not already synced up at the beginning. As you can tell, I have a lot of black space surrounding my actual video game footage, and the reason for that is because my capture card records a little bit outside of the box, I guess. But a quick way to fix that is that I think this is a feature that only Adobe Premiere Pro has, but we're going to click on this, and we are going to drag out from the center on one of these lines and it just expands it so that we fit the box and you can adjust this to your liking you can make it even go farther than that but I think this should suffice we're gonna try and make sure that this is centered as possible and that's pretty much good now going through this you can obviously tell that we have a little bit of a problem with the audio of the commentary and the audio of the video game footage competing against each other. In my opinion, the video game footage is too loud at the moment for you to actually hear what I'm saying most of the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in over to this area, and Adobe has this really cool feature called the Audio Mixer. I'm pretty sure this is only Adobe at this point, but there might be some other programs that can do this. Basically what it does is it lays out every single audio track you have, We've got audio 1 and audio 2, and we can control the audio levels right from these levels here. I can even turn it down so that way you don't hear it at all. A general rule of thumb is that you want the level of your audio commentary to be louder than the level of your video game audio. That way people can clearly hear what you're saying, but they can also hear your video game in the background. So, we're going to play through this area here and see how everything's set up so far. Oh, I hope you guys didn't hear me singing along with that, because it's just such a great song and an intro. Here, I'm going to stop it here. Did you guys see whenever it went red up here? You do not want your audio to go into the red zone. That is called clipping. Whenever you do that, you do not hear the audio, and it could potentially mess up your speakers. So, generally, if you see it going into that red zone, you want to take your audio down a notch with your master level or in the other levels here. Alright, hold on a second, plus button. Alright, we're gonna bring our video game no footage down here, a bit. Because I don't like being told what to do. And here we go, starting bring right up off slightly the a little game, bit. Just like the good old days. Act one, tropical resort. Stretching it out. Ready, ready, bring our final level down a little bit. Alright, so I think we've got our audio levels adjusted quite nicely. If you don't have the capability of an audio mixer like this, you can also come down to your actual audio clips and you should be able to adjust their volumes individually. Uh, you might not have the master audio levels to make sure that it's not clipping, but generally, if it's clipping, you will hear a <coughs> sound. Like just a <coughs> Yeah, you don't want that sound. And that basically wraps up the editing portion of this tutorial. A couple things you need to remember whenever you're editing your video is that you need to cut out your excess material before whenever you before you start playing the game and also after whenever you finish playing the game and also try not to make your episodes go over about 10 minutes long if you make it like 30 minutes some people don't like watching it that long I know I don't but typically shorter is better you want to keep it as interesting as you possibly can you want to keep it fun and above all else, you want to have fun yourself, because that's the point of video games, is just to have fun. You need to review your footage and make sure it's all good. You need to double check any titles that you may have put in it for spelling errors, because when you upload a video with spelling errors, it doesn't look very good. I mean, you would think that it wouldn't matter so much, but you need to pay attention to that. So we're going to go to File, Export, Media. And we're basically going to get ready to export our video. Basically, exporting takes the video and turns it into a file that other programs can read. This is also sometimes called sharing or producing in different softwares. It depends on what you're using. Also, it's a good idea to specify where your clip is going and what the name of it is going to be. Here we're going to click on output name in Adobe. And we want it to save to the desktop. We're going to call this Sonic Colors Colores. LP1 and we're just going to hit save and different softwares have different ways of doing that but it's pretty much the same for all of them um, there's a couple different formats you can use you can use WMV, MPEG4, FLV I typically use FLV 
but YouTube has a list of other file formats that you can use as well. FLV to me is the smallest file size with the most quality. And we're gonna have to change a few settings because you'll usually start off with match source attributes high quality in Adobe. And some softwares won't let you change your settings, but thankfully Premiere Pro does. We're gonna come down here to the video tab. I'm gonna scroll on down. And we're in bitrate settings now. We want to have two encoding passes. This is going to make the export take longer, but it is also going to make it so that we have more quality in our compression. Bitrate level needs to be changed to custom so that way we can mess around with this thing. And as a general guideline, you need to have it between 2,000 and 3,000 kilobits per second. So we'll go about 2,300 since this is a smaller video. If it's a longer video, definitely go 2,000 because it'll take a long time to export as it is. You don't need 3,000 anyway. So we're going to scroll on down here. And we're not going to mess with any of these other bitrate settings, but on advanced settings, we're going to set the keyframe distance. And it should be set to 30 frames, just like that. And once you've got all your settings complete, you need to hit the export button and just let it go for a bit. This part may take a while. It's a good idea to close all of the programs that are open at the time being. And as Nintendo would say, take a break and go outside for a bit. Alright, so our video has finished exporting. The export window has disappeared since it's done. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go out of our editing program here and we're going to go down to our Let's Play. We're going to double click it, make sure that it's alright. Review the whole video before you begin the uploading process to make sure that it actually worked correctly. Because if it doesn't, then you're going to be sort of disappointed whenever you wait for like 30 minutes or to an hour and it doesn't work. That's happened to me before and it's very disappointing, but we're gonna go over here to our internet browser, Chrome in this instance, and anywhere on YouTube, you can just come up here to the top and click the upload link. I'm pretty sure most of you understand these steps by now if you're used to uploading videos. But anyways, we're going to hit the select files from your computer. Of course, go and choose your file. Whenever you're titling your video, give it a reasonable title don't put something misleading that's gonna confuse people and that works that tells people what is inside of the video and what they can expect from it now the other thing I see a lot of times and this is just specific to let's plays but people also like to add on uh, little titles to basically say something funny from the video that they said and we'll say go in top speed and that's alright but don't make your whole title misleading and confusing because when people click on your video they might be expecting one thing and get another thing and that's never good and now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the description also another thing is that many people put annotations on their video and links to other videos in the description and that is a good way to further get your videos around and get people to keep watching your videos for whatever time they're on type in tags these are going to be tags that are related to your videos like say nintendo or Sega. Over here, if you want everybody to see your video, definitely click public. The other ones, unlisted, anyone with the link can view it. So you send the link to somebody and they can view your video private. Only people you choose can view the video. We're going to leave ours on public so everybody can see this video, this fun, interesting video, hopefully. And in your category, definitely choose a category that's relevant. For this one, it's going to be gaming, but you have several other different options. And we can just leave the license and rights ownership as the standard YouTube license, just like that. And all changes are saved. So basically everything we just did is ready to go. The upload is going to continue for about another 40 minutes or so. And I'll get back with you guys whenever that's done. And there you guys have it. There's my process for editing and uploading a video. I did specifically show you guys how to edit and upload a Let's Play video, but the techniques that I used will be very helpful in no matter what kind of editing you're doing. I basically showed you the basics of cutting and arranging your clips, syncing up audio, and a couple other things that you will find very useful for any of your projects. And in a way, editing is sort of like drawing. The more you practice, the quicker you will be able to edit, and the more efficient you will become at it, and the better your product will look by the time you get it done. And with that, I conclude the How to Make Your Own Video Game Walkthrough series. 
I might do more editing videos on the future on more complicated subjects, like if you want to do drawing videos, say. And I am also possibly going to do a tutorial showing how to record handheld game systems like the Nintendo DS. It's going to be a little bit more complicated of a setup than this, but it is still going to involve the capture card. It is a pretty cool method, and I think it's going to work out nicely, so. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Hey guys, I want to formally invite you guys to check out my YouTube channel, wherever it may be. I should have a link on screen somewhere, but if you do that, I've got a ton of other videos for you guys to watch, possibly even part one and two of this tutorial. So thank you guys for subscribing if you do, and thank you guys for watching this video if you did. Laters.